Hello guys and welcome back to Persona 3 Reload. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and recruited Junpei to seize, and we learned of Tartarus, this huge tower that grows out of our school during the dark hour, and it's our job to go in there with our personas, fight shadows, and hopefully try and see if we can put an end to the dark hour. First thing I want to mention is, look at how cool and trippy this background is. I absolutely love it. Second thing I want to mention is there are a few things here that we don't know the purpose of yet, we as the player. Uh, mm. Motorcycle, this is where I keep my navigation equipment. Sorry, but could you, do you mind not touching that? There's also this weird device. What's this? I've never seen something like, th like it before. Regardless, it doesn't seem to be functioning right now. Anyways, the only people we can put on our teams are Takuba and Junpei. If we go to... What is it? Stats? Uh, you'll see in the bottom right corner there's the party button that I can't press right now because it's grayed out. But this is how you would unequip people from your party. Right now it just gives me a noise. You could equip and unequip people from your party through this menu. Uh, we'll use that later once we start to get more teammates, and yeah, let's head up these stairs and go infiltrate Tartarus. All right. Are you all ready? I'm ready. Good luck. So, it's the real deal from here on, huh? Well, it's easy to get lost in. Can you all hear me? Whoa! Is that you, Senpai? I'll be providing audio backup from here on out. Keep that in mind. Wait, are you saying you can see this place from all the way out there? It's my persona's ability. The structure of Tartarus actually changes from day to day. I'd like to join you up there, but we need someone to provide outside support. That's even more concerning. Now, based on your current location, you can expect to encounter enemies at any time. This shouldn't be too tough, but proceed with caution. You'll get the hang of it as you go. Right. Got it. Why is she always like that? Right. Let's begin. Defeat all the shadows on that floor. I'll support you as much as I can, but it's up to you to learn something out there. Alrighty, this uh, infiltration of Tartarus is going to be pretty much a tutorial. Doesn't make it any less cool looking though. This place looks gorgeous. It has a bunch of cool things like that right there, the opening door sort of thing. Sometimes you'll see areas like this with stairs, you can use these to outmaneuver shadows if they chase after you. And speaking of shadows, first of all, that's super cool and trippy. Uh, but I might be here all day just being like, whoa, look at this cool thing that's super cool and trippy. So, let's move on to our first Hold on. real There's fight. Up ahead. This is the first real battle for Takeba and Iori. Proceed with caution. Alright, let's start by going over how to attack shadows. When faced with an enemy, you have two primary options for fending them off. The first option is to use your equipped weapon. The second option is to use your persona. But remember, every persona has its own strengths and weaknesses. Knowing how personas work will be crucial. Try summoning yours right now. Alright, you can select either an attack or a skill. Uh, some might deplete your HP or SP. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's all you need to know. Okay. Looks like I'm up. Here goes. Check this out. Persona! 
Once you complete a battle, you get XP and an item. So, Orpheus just leveled up. Quick thing I need to explain. Everyone has a level, but for the protagonist, your level and your persona's level are separate, and there's a specific reason for that that I'll get to in just a minute. Anyways, uh, Makoto leveled up, he got some more HP and some more SP. Oh yeah! How'd you like my persona ability? Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Well done, Iori. Considering it was your first battle, you did well. Takeba too. You'll be fine. Don't be afraid to show what you can do. Got it. Good. Let's continue exploring. Let us do just that. Another shadow up ahead. Another shadow up ahead. Let's I said the exact same thing, funnily enough. The battle's about to begin. Everyone, stay focused. All right, next, let's go over a useful approach for defeating enemies. Most enemies have an elemental affinity that they have low resistance to. Targeting weaknesses is one of the best ways to deal damage. Not only that, it can also knock enemies down. Knocking down an enemy creates an opening, letting you continue your offense. Weaknesses, huh? Done. I'll show you how it's done. Wait, let me handle this one. Just point it to my head, and pull the trigger. I can do this! Oh, you're not so bad yourself, Yukatan! That's it, Takeba. You give it a try as well. All right. Uh, each enemy has a weakness, and if you hit that weakness, you'll get one more attack. What to do? If you successfully knock them down, that is. We have Cowardly Maya. This is the same enemy that we fought on our, with our first battle, uh, up on the rooftop. The enemy's weakness. Keep that up and finish off the rest. I'll go with. Come. You're going down too. Work, Takeba. You performed as well as I hoped you would. Totally. I can take my eyes off you. Can you try not being a creep? Great. Looks like everyone's gotten used to handling their personas. Leader, take note of each member's strengths and conduct the battle accordingly. I can still sense some enemies around. Let's move on. It's not going to be too much commentary. I wonder how far we can get without losing contact with Karija Senpai. I won't have much commentary because a lot of this is just hey, tutorials. Found some kind of boxy looking thing. Yes, boxes like those seem to be scattered all throughout Tartarus. Sometimes they contain useful items for battle. Seek them out as often as you can. Oh, sweet! So they're basically like treasure chests. Yeah, let's bust it open and see what's inside. Treasure chests can contain things. I'm gonna try to summarize those uh, little text blurbs as much as I can. Uh, items can restore HP or SP. Go to the item screen, or you can use the skill. Uh, prioritize Makoto's HP so that he doesn't faint while exploring. Yo, is this really the school? Like, no joke? But it'd be kind of funny if we were actually inside our classroom right now, huh? One thing that is uh, pretty interesting about this being a remake that's that comes out like after several more entries have come out is they can make a lot of tongue-in-cheek jokes about future entries in the series. Shadow detected. Looks like they haven't noticed you yet. Now's your chance. Try sneaking up on them from behind. Make sure you stay out of their field of vision. Uh, 
You can attack with square. Uh, if you attack them from behind, you have the advantage. If they attack you from behind, they have the advantage. Next, I'm going to explain a tactic for defeating several enemies at once. First, go ahead and strike an enemy's weakness. I'll keep track of tactical data, such as any enemy weaknesses you've identified. If you ever forget an enemy's affinities, just let me know and I'll get that data for you. So yeah, L1, you can analyze uh, what weakness they have. Um, it's a trial and error system where you try out different stuff on enemies and just see what works, what doesn't, and then you can check back here in case you forget. Uh, in the original Persona 3, it was a thing where you pressed L1, had Mitsuru analyze an enemy, and then after a couple, like, a couple of turns had passed, you'd be like, okay, here's all of their weaknesses, all of their affinities, what does and doesn't work on them. Uh, but this is, the remake makes it so it's more like pretty much every other entry in the uh, Persona franchise, and I'm pretty sure every other entry in the Mega Ten franchise as well, because I forgot to mention, the Persona franchise is sort of a spin-off to a larger franchise called the Megami Tensei franchise. Right, now knock down the other one. That's when you perform an all-out attack. An all-out attack? It's a maneuver that engages the entire team in a coordinated assault when all enemies have been knocked down. Naturally, the enemy has no way of defending against this. It's one of the most reliable means of attack. Whoa! That sounds so badass! Let's give it a try right now! All-out attacks. These are a pretty iconic part of the series where if you knock down all of the enemies, you're able to have a big attack where everyone in the party attacks the enemies. It's something like this. This is our chance! Let's wipe them out! Here we go. Shuffle time! Uh... I'll just read this out because I feel like I won't be able to explain shuffle time properly. After a battle is won, shuffle time may occur. During shuffle time, cards will be formed. Cards formed by the possibilities within your soul will appear. Uh, there are different types of cards here. There's persona, which means you get a new persona that you can use. There, there's experience ones. There's ones that help you out in battle. Uh, skill cards and money. Uh, Getting one more, getting one more and all out attacks increases the chance of getting shuffle time, so be sure to take advantage of that. We got Apsaris. Done and dusted. That's another really cool part about all out attacks is if you finish off the battle with an all out attack, then you'll get a cool splash screen with uh, whatever character you you were using at the time. How'd you like our all out combo attack, you filthy shadows? When I saw my opening. It's like my body just knew what to do. That was magnificent teamwork. It's hard to believe it's your first time. As you grasp the flow of battle, you'll learn to coordinate with each other seamlessly. Let's apply what we've learned so far and continue exploring. Yukari's uh, thing there where she was like, my body just knew how to move on its own. Whoa, the, those open on their own? Sheesh, that scared the crap out of me. Okay, thanks Junpei. Uh, that's kind of a thing that's like a sort of running thing in the series where if Atlas doesn't know how to explain, hey, uh, how did these teenagers like coordinate this thing or how are they physically able to I do this? They're just like, oh, their body just knew how to move on, on their own through magic or something like that. Uh, that's the excuse I'm pretty sure that they use in... Uh, the Persona 3 and Persona 5 dancing uh, s spin off games. Take advantage of what you just learned. Try not to alert the enemy as you move. I've covered the basics of combat now, but the most important thing is making decisions based on the situation at hand. I'll continue providing support, but this time, go ahead and try fighting on your own. You, my boy, are able to possess multiple personas and summon them at will. I can feel a new potential within myself. 
So something that's only something that only our uh, main protagonist can do in this game is change our personas. Uh, you can just press the persona button, and by pressing L1 or R1, you can swap to a different one. Your persona just now. It looks like you really do have a special power. So we can continue this. Uh, swapping personas is something in the modern Persona trilogy you can only do with the main protagonist, but in the original Persona trilogy, everyone could swap out personas. Alright, so we have a wide variety of choices right here. The one that I always like to go for is experience, and uh, money is another important one too, because Experience it makes sure you're always you always have some fairly decent levels And so you won't be behind when you face off against bosses and stuff like that money is something you'll need to use for raising social stats uh, Other stuff that I like to focus on is of course personas because getting more personas means having more advantages and Another one that we'll get to later is something that I like to focus on but for now Get some XP. The enemy has been defeated. Excellent work. Um, was that? Well, it looks like he has the ability to summon different personas. I suspected as much after the events from the other day, but now we know for sure. All right. Okay, I think this is a good place to stop. There's a device nearby that will teleport you back. Look around for it. There should also be some stairs nearby, but I can't approve any more exploration right now. We'll explore the upper floors next time. One-way teleporters. You find it, and it takes you back to the lobby, and you can't go back to the floor you were just on. Hey! I found some stairs! Wait, we're looking for the teleporter, aren't we? Exactly what Takeba said. Please prioritize getting back safely for now. So yeah, we shouldn't be going there right now. Let's just continue on. Look, that treasure chest looks different from the one before. Yes, that particular box is sealed in a special way. The box can be unlocked by its own mechanism, but it needs something else to work during the dark hour. The twilight fragment I found in my room seems to be reacting. What's that you got there? I wonder... That reaction. Do you have a twilight fragment with you? Try holding it up to the treasure chest. The special treasure chest can only be opened with twilight fragments, and some of them take multiple twilight fragments. How do you get more twilight fragments, you ask? Well, we'll get to that a little bit later. Got a Snuff Soul, that's an SP uh, revitalizing item. Ah, I thought that's what it was. There's, that's a Twilight Fragment. They can be used on devices throughout Tartarus. You might find more in Tartarus or other locations with traces of shadows. If you come across any going forward, you'll want to take them. We'll keep that in mind. Anyways, we've explored pretty much this entire floor, like so we can go back. Now use it to return to the entrance. Should I return to the entrance? Nothing else we can do. Welcome back. So, how was it? No problem. I see. Well, if you gained confidence, that's the best thing you could have achieved. Wow! I never knew I had that kind of power! But damn, why do I feel so exhausted? Because you were bouncing around like a little kid. You say that, but you look pretty tired yourself, Yukatan. This is different. It's like I'm having trouble breathing. What's going on? That's the effect of the dark hour. You'll become fatigued more easily. Don't worry. You'll get used to it. 
I have to say, though, I'm surprised. You all did much better than I expected. At this rate, they'll catch up to you in no time, Akihiko. <laughs> we'll see about that. By combining my powers with the teams, I was able to stand against the shadows. I sense a strong bond with them. <laughs> Just like Yukari and Junpei, I feel tired as well. I decided that it would be best to return to my room and rest. We're going to return to our room and rest in the next episode, but before we do the outro, I just want to mention there was a mechanic in the original Persona 3 and Persona 3 Fess where as you continue doing more and more battles, your, care, your teammates would start to get tired. And what that means is that they would start missing more and more attacks as you continued. And if you went back to the bottom floor to heal, because that was an, uh, an easy and reliable way to heal up all of your party members, they would just decide that they wanted to go home for the day, and you wouldn't be able to use them for the rest of the Tartarus expedition. It was quite an annoying mechanic, and I'm glad that they removed it. They removed it in Portable, and that's one of the many changes from Portable that they brought over to Reload. There are actually still some remnant, remnants of that left, that uh, stamina system left in this game that we'll go ahead and bring up in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!